Hey everybody, welcome back to Creating Scenery from Microsoft Flight Simulator. And I hope you guys all had a great weekend. Uh, it was Memorial Day weekend here in the United States where we honor our fallen uh, veterans of the military. Um, today, hopefully I can make this relatively short and it's really kind of an invitation to open the discussion. Uh, I'm not really going to be doing any, any SDK stuff. But it's a discussion on how I use the SDK. I've been asked uh, a few times, why do I go in and uh, edit the XMLs and not use the tools that are in the dev mode of the sim? Well, to be honest with you, I do use the tools to create projects in the sim but not all the time and probably I minimize the amount of time that I'm actually in the uh, scenery editor and the SDK inside the sim and there's a reason for that okay the reason is I don't like to overextend the abilities uh, of my computer all right not to say my computer can't handle it um, it's just that once you're in the sim it's loading all of that data that you have in your community folder and the regular sim okay all the graphics requirements of being inside the SDK in the scenery editor is no different than if I was going to fly all right so I can bring up my PM DG 737 and I can go in and and in the in the dev mode I can even in scenery editor I can still mess with the controls of the aircraft all right so I have full function of the sim animation such as this truck going across so if I'm in the sim doing stuff uh, making changes to XMLs and stuff like that uh, using all these toolbars and stuff okay you know going into the material library or the different model libs you know the model libs and all the other assets I might have for an airport Sometimes when I'm editing that stuff, I don't need the graphic stuff. And if I can do that stuff outside of the sim, then I'm not requiring my computer to do all of the graphic stuff. All right. So here I have, I'm at my guinea pig airport, 5 Alpha 1 in Norwalk, Ohio. And I have the PMDG loaded up pretty much in the middle of a cornfield. But, um, you know, it's loading all of the asset, of the resources that it's needed to model this aircraft. Interior, exterior, all that kind of stuff. But if I'm over here working on a radar tower or a fuel tank farm or a hangar, um, I don't need all of that stuff, but usually I bring up my Cessna 172, you know, something with small resources. But I minimize the time that I'm actually in the sim doing my scenery editing, all right? I'm in Blender most of the time, uh, or Krita doing some artwork or something like that. Or I'm moving around GUIDs, uh, or I'm adding assets. Now, you can come into the sim, and I'll show you in a later video. You know, I can come up to this project and come down to um, uh, 
I can I can come down to the asset groups and I can add or edit an asset group using these menus and stuff but usually that's just text driven stuff and when I'm in the sim I don't want to use all these re computer resources have these computer resources running in the background if I'm just doing some uh, text based uh, editing uh, I hope you understand that. Um, I'm going to get out of the sim here in a second. Um, but this is just a discussion. Uh, it's not the way that you have to do it or you should do it. It's just the way that I have chosen to do it. That if I'm going to be doing text-related edits in my scenery or for my scenery such as adding new new directories, new folders, or I need to change something in the XML, I'm not going to be inside the sim doing it because I don't need all the graphic stuff going on. All right? So a lot of what you see in my videos, I'm doing a lot of editing outside of the sim, basically just managing the computer resources that I'm working with. All right? So I got out of the sim, uh, and you know I have uh, all the resources that I need using Notepad++. Okay, which is a free text editor. Um, but like I said, this is this is a discussion for all of us. It's it's not the way that you have to do your work. This is just the way that I choose to do my work, just to minimize the amount of computer resources when I'm working on a project because like I said earlier when you're in the sim in the scenery editor all the resources necessary to run a uh, flight simulator are running at the same time so yeah um, I don't know if you can hear in the background since I've been in the sim my graphics card fans are running full blown right now because I was in the sim. All right. Now, most of you probably or a lot of you probably have uh, fantastic computers with with liquid cooling systems and all this kind of stuff. You got your uh, 3080 graphics card and stuff like that. You guys just m make your choice of how you want to do it with me. I just like to minimize the, like I said, the amount of stress that's put on my computer. All right. And when I'm in a text editor, it's not using my graphics card like it would inside the sim. Um, some things process slower outside of the sim, such as if you're building your project. All right. You know, using the FS package tool to build your project. All right, this this executable here that I copy out of the SDK into all the different projects that I'm using, so I can drag and drop my XMLs onto that and run and do a build. Okay, it might run a little slower outside of the sim because it needs to make a call to some aspect of the sim outside. Does that make sense? Okay. You know, but we're only talking maybe one or two minutes more to, to process uh, a package. But it's not using all those graphics tools. I don't need those graphics tools. Now, I do build every time that I'm inside the SDK. I mean, inside the scenery editor. But I can... I can go into my projects and add folders and add assets probably just as fast using a text editor than I can waiting for the sim to, to load up and, you know, all those resources and things like that. So I just want you guys to know that that's just the preferred way that I do it. It doesn't mean you have to do it. Now, I am going to do some videos coming up that I'm going to be using the menu-driven asset creation inside the sim, just so you can see how it works. But um, 
I just want to address why I use uh, Notepad++ a lot to do a lot of my editing of my XMLs. Um, so I'm curious to see what you guys do. I know there's, I, I bet it's probably 50-50. I bet a lot of you guys do it the way that I do it with the XMLs, and I bet there's a lot of you that just solely work inside the SDK, the scenery editor, to do this kind of stuff. But I'm curious to, let's open up a discussion and give me your pros and cons of one way or the other. I'd be uh, really interested to find out how you guys th uh, work, what your workflow is. Um, so yeah, that's, that's why I do it this way. Uh, it's just my preferred way. So I'll do a video coming up on creating a project using the menu system um, but uh, yeah just a day of discussion if you so to speak um, now there probably won't be any more uh, flight sim SDK videos this week uh, I have um, I have a commission to make a uh, national park map, so I have to get that done. And so uh, you guys have a week off of tutorials, so um, I don't know if you guys going to be clapping or crying. I don't know. But um, this week uh, I'm going to get some cartography stuff done that I have to get done. And next week, we will get back to doing tutorials. Uh, I hope you guys have a fantastic week. I hope uh, your part of the world is running smoothly. And I will see you on the next video. Uh, comment. Let's, let's start a discussion on the pros and cons of being inside the SDK Scenery Editor Sim versus doing a lot of edits outside. Let's start that discussion. And we will see you guys on the next video. See you guys later. Thanks for coming.